the church say amen. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Let the church say amen. Amen. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. We're going to get started with our worship hour today, and our deacons are going to lead us in worship. And then after that, we got a great surprise and event today. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Deacon. Let everybody say amen. Everybody sing amen. Everybody sing amen. Amen. Let the church sing. The church sing. Let the church sing. Amen. Amen. All the saints sing. Amen. All the saints sing. All the saints. sisters and brothers, all you saints in God. I'm coming out, my scripture today will be Psalms, um, coming out of Psalms 25, uh, 1 through 5. If, you, if you're able to, please stand. If not, that's all right. God will bless you anyway. Psalm 25 and 1 says, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemy triumph over me. Let not my enemy triumph over me. Yea, yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress with thy cause. Show me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. I have read to you Psalm um, 25, 1 through, uh, a portion of Psalms 25, 1 through 5. May God add a blessing to the hearers and readers of his word. You may take your seats. Jim, 2.48, call and meet him. Amazing sight, the Savior stands and knocks at every door. 
church, same church. church say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Isn't God good? Oh, do you trust him? Is your hope in nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness? Let the church say amen. And I'm not hoping on the government. I'm not hoping on the doctors. And I'm not hoping on the lawyers. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. The Christ. Oh, ain't nobody excited but me. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Sister Burden. 
I'm going to yield to you. Are you ready? Come on. Sorry. Just a quick announcement. And I want to reiterate the seriousness we have a youth trip going to the Georgia Aquarium scheduled for uh, the 22nd of July and we only have a few students or children that have signed up and we want to be able to fellowship together so I need all children and their parents to sign up today so that we can secure transportation arrangements because we have to get there and we need to know the number or at least a very accurate number so that we can secure transportation. And then you can fill out the permission slips and bring them back to me later. It's free for all children. So we want you to sign up. And those that are 10 and under, parents, if you cannot accompany them because there is something uh, serious that you have going on then please come and talk to me one-on-one -on -one. but we're asking parents of children 10 and under to accompany them to the aquarium with us but please sign up today not only with me but there are slips out here so sign up thank you and all youth all youth if you would um, big m youth if you would go to the back to come in for our honor service thank you Let the church say amen. amen. All right, if you have a graduate, let's, let's go in the vestibule and we're going to get it organized so we can do our honors day today. Amen. Thank God for honors day and graduation. Now, did anybody have any children to graduate this year that we don't know about? Amen, amen, amen. I graduated last week too myself. Yeah, I got my high school diploma and stuff like that, so I'm good to go. I might go to technical school this time around, amen. I don't think I'm going to do a four-year college anymore. I'm going to do a technical school. Get me a trade. Somebody say amen. Let the church say amen. There's something wrong with people who can't laugh. I'm sure the folks need to, need to laugh a little bit, amen. Just a few uh, reminders while they get ready. On June 18th, uh, which is Men and Women's Day, which is also Father's Day, members are asked to pay an assessment of $100. The assessment leader is Deacon Alvin Lowe. Brother Lowe, are you here? Yeah. Amen. And men give your $100 to uh, Deacon Lowe. And then Sister uh, Louise Singer Singleton, is she here today? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, hey. All right. It's good to see you. And she is the captain of the women's. And the men have pledged to pledge more than the ladies this time. Amen. Right. You know, since it's Father's Day and stuff, right. we need to show out, right? We need to show up and do what? Show out. And that's on June 18th, with this, which is a week from now. On Tuesday, now watch, listen to this now. Tuesday, June 20th and 21, which is a Thursday, tu excuse me, Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to have Vacation Bible School. We're going to have Adult Vacation Bible School in here, and then we're going to have the Youth Vacation Bible School in, 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 in the back right there, okay? In the fellowship hall, amen? That means everybody in the church is invited. Okay, I got five amen, but that's all right. Y'all are still invited, amen? Amen. Now, that Friday, which is the 23rd, we're going to have a vacation Bible school cookout, and it's going to start at 6 o'clock, amen? So that the 23rd, which is a Friday, that evening, we're going to have a vacation school cookout, amen? Now, Saturday... Uh, July 22nd is when we're planning to go to aquarium, and Sister uh, Burton has already addressed that. Sunday, July 23rd, we're going to have a back-to-school bash, which will be held here on July 23rd, and that's a Sunday. Saturday, July 29th, we're going to Mebane, North Carolina, where the pastor will be the guest speaker uh, for at uh, the pastor's anniversary for Pastor Dr. William Wilson. 
all right? And we will be traveling to Mebane, North Carolina, and you can see Miss Loretta Bush in the back in all that orange. <laughs> On that orange, she's just a little orangey today. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't forget Sunday school. We had a wonderful Sunday school this morning, amen? And y'all actually showed up, too. I love it. I love it. I love it. So please show up 9 o'clock on Sunday for Sunday school. Amen. Bible study is we're, in, we're on summer break for Bible study, and we will resume in August. Amen. Amen. And don't forget our, our online prayer meeting on Tuesday, still ongoing at 7 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. God bless you. Sister Burton, we're ready. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I forgot something. Y'all say what? What you forgot, Rev? I, I forgot Pastor. <laughs> it's gonna be all right, y'all. Pray for him. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we all ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Um, just a few uh reminders on on the July 3rd uh, will be the last Sunday that they record our radio, our radio ministry. So they're turning it over to a sports station. So, yeah, we, we have done well. Um, for the last going on four years, we've been out there in the airways and on Facebook and YouTube and and we, we, we did what we said we were going to do. Our mission to say, go ye therefore. Amen. We have to go to the people if the people won't come to us. Amen. Another announcement I'd like to make is um, um, next Sunday. Now, Deacon Style, now me, you, and the boys. Now, we got up our game. Ran now, I see you walked in. Now, we got up our game, Doc. Um, we cannot let these women outdo out us next win, next Sunday. Amen? You know, they got a, they have a plan because I always heard that they think while we sleep. But we're going to put them on notice today. We're we, we going we gonna to make this a competition. Amen? Also, on um, Reverend Andrews mentioned that, I want to just um, lift up our sick and shed in this. And, and I want y'all to be real, real careful. I want y'all to pray. Pray. Pray honestly and sincerely with all your heart for these sick members that we know about. And, and, and you know, let's just lift them up in prayer. Um, Minister Henry Bryant, Deacon James Clifford, and Deacon Tobe, and Deacon Arthur Terry. And we always pray for our mother of the church, Deaconess Laura Henderson, and Deaconess Evan Lowe. She is here today. Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Daryl Dandy, Brother Robert Smith, Brother Lamar Smith, Sister Vivian Tompkins, Sister Charlene Olton, and Sister Flossie Hall. And, and we don't have it on, on the list, but Sister Loreen Thurman, that's Reverend Teacher's wife. And we, we're going to pray for her. Amen. So at this time, we're going to acknowledge our June birth month. June birth. See, I'm going to sing. Craig, you will help me sing. You going to help me sing. Are you in the house? So you might as well come on and sing with me. So, <clears throat> Johnny, you and I are going to sing happy birthday. And i tell you, Miss Blocker's birthday is on Tuesday. And she got a birthday present already. So we're going we gonna to actually um, sing happy birthday to all our church members. So, uh, first month, please stand. All you born in June. Come on, Weezy. There you go. All right. June. Come on. I know it's some more. There's one more. Don't be scared to say. All right. Let's go, John. Let's go. I'm going to sing. Happy birthday to you.
God bless you. Hallelujah. And, and I, I forgot one thing. Um, oh, Lord, I think I done got old now and I forgot. Oh, 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 somebody had an anniversary. Didn't somebody have an anniversary? And they, I think it was 42 years. It was 42 years, and, and my, my mind slipped. Bro, bro, who is it? Oh, oh, pastor and his, oh, my goodness. Well, y'all stand up. Y'all stand up. The Bible, the Bible says, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. And I think Pastor done worked it out, find his good thing. And they've been married 42 years. Oh, my God. And so we honor you guys. Thank you for representing a long-loved marriage. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to my 42 years. Amen. Some of y'all been married 50 years, 30 years, and we want to celebrate that. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Give them a hand. Amen. Amen. Anybody else is having an anniversary and youth ministry, don't forget, we got a meeting at the church. All the youth ministry, children's ministry, coordinators, we all got a meeting to this, this afternoon right at the church. Amen. Amen. All right, we are so elated for this day. We are so proud of the graduates and the completers and those that have been promoted to the next grade level. First of all, let's just give them a round of applause. They have worked so hard this year. Now, as our children come in, we want you to stand to your feet and give them a standing ovation for all that they have done, the, the youth of the Big M. Congratulations, youth. Now, we have a number of graduates and those that have been honored this year. We're going to call them and let them come to the front so pastor can shake their hands and recognize them, and we'll have something coming to you. So when I call your name and I give um, where you're going, if you would come up and shake their hands, okay? First of all, we have a college graduate, Miss Elena Singleton, who was a 2023 graduate of Tuskegee with a degree in engineering and she, chemical engineering, and she graduated cum laude. Next we have, that's right, one of them Singleton girls. And parents, if you would stand, because you had a hand in all of this. Alexander Cobb III, graduating from South Aiken High School. Job well done, Alexander. We also have Janaya Singleton, who is promoted to the 11th grade, the A honor roll at Burke County High School.
Next, we have Miss Harmony Grace Taylor, who was promoted to the first grade at Heritage Academy. We also have Jocelyn Burton, who was promoted to the ninth grade at Midland Valley High School. Next, we have Mr. Jordan Burton, who was promoted to the third grade at Bird Elementary School. We also have Azalea Cobb, who was promoted to the 12th grade at South Aiken High School. Demarion Drinks, who's promoted to the 11th grade at South Carolina Virtual Charter School. Miss Genesis Smith, who's promoted to the 6th grade at South Carolina Virtual Charter School. Miss Emery Smith, who is promoted to the 2nd grade at South Carolina Virtual Charter School. And we have Miss Madison Johnson, who has been promoted to the 1st grade at Warren Elementary School. One of our kindergarten graduates. Next, we have Ms. Kaylin Harris, who's promoted to the eighth grade at Bel Air K-8. <laughs> Wonderful job, Kaylin. Next, we have Mr. Randall Harrison, who was promoted to the eighth grade at Lakeside Middle School. She's promoted to the, he is promoted to the eighth grade at Lakeside Middle School. Eighth grade. We also have Mr. Omari Brown, who has been promoted to the second grade at North Augusta Elementary School. We also want to recognize Ms. Callie Driggers, who's promoted to the third grade at South Columbia Elementary School. Ms. Chloe Driggers, who's promoted to the seventh grade at Lakeside Middle School. And we want to recognize our kindergarten graduate, Mr. Noah Kyler, who's promoted to the first grade at South Columbia Elementary School. Great job, Noah. And we want to recognize Mr. Jace Boyd, who just finished pre-K at Cornerstone. Next, we have Miss Chloe Stevens, who is promoted to the sixth grade at Evans Middle School. Great job. We have Miss Danielle Young, who is promoted to the eighth grade at Tech Middle School. And we have Miss Taylor Young, who is promoted to the 10th grade at Greenwood High School. Congratulations. Now, I know they have worked very hard. What are we waiting in? Oh. I'm so sorry, Aaron. We have one more to recognize. We have Mr. Aaron K. Ruth, who was promoted to the seventh grade at Curtis Baptist School. And also absent today, Mr. Keith Anderson, who's promoted to the fourth grade at Hepsiba Elementary School. Congratulations, Aaron. Job well done. And we have Miss Trinity Williams. Can everybody give her an applause? All right, great job. Now, students, we know you've worked very hard. We are so proud of you, and we want to support you in everything that you do at the Big M. Stand one more time and take your bow, students. 
we are so proud of you. Now, we're going to uh, go on with our service. Congratulations. And Reverend Harvey Andrews got promoted to seventh grade. Ain't nobody clap for me. Good Lord. Good morning, my Christian family. Morning. Now is the time for tithes and offering. Would you please stand, face the wall, and follow the guidance of the urchins? Thank you. Good job. Good job. I would like to say good morning. Have each and every one given at this time. If you have, please stand for prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, that be thy name, that I came to come. Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I come this minute hour just to say thank you. Father, I thank you for I was laying down last night. And I, I thank you for our early rising this morning. Uh, and oh, Lord, uh, and Father, we thank you for our graduation. Uh, because, Father, they're going to need it going through this journey now. Uh, and oh, Lord, uh, Father, ask you to bless each and every one all over this land and the country. Because we all stand in need of a blessing. Uh, some of us need one thing, Lord, and uh, some need another. Uh, but, oh, Lord, I don't know what they need, uh, uh, but I'm calling on you, Father. Because you said in your word, you will supply all our need. Uh, I know that you is able, uh, and I know that you will. Uh, and bless each and every one that gave in this offering. Bless those that want to give and did not have to give. I ask thee bless in Jesus' name, and thank God, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. For the mayor of choir sang, we omitted one person, two person. Hallelujah. We don't want anyone to leave without being recognized and us telling you how proud we are of you. So we have two more to congratulate. It's Avery Moe, who's going to the ninth grade at Evans High School. 
Mr. Avery Moe, who's going through the ninth grade at Evans High School. And Ashton Moe, who's going to the 11th grade at Evans High School. Congratulations, Avery. Congratulations, Ashton. We really are truly proud of you. God bless you on your next year in school. Thank you all so much. I think I'm going to sing with the boys this morning. I look pretty good up here. I'm going to get by Vaughn and Deacon Styles. I'm going to sing with y'all. Come on. Amen. Come on, Johnny. Start it off. Come on, Johnny. Start me. I'm getting ready to go. I better go on back to my spot there. Y'all take too long. I'm going back up here and sit in my seat. Hallelujah. I missed it. in our bylaws. <laughs> so we like to dedicate this song to one of our deacons, Deacon Toe. One of the songs that he loves to sing every time he comes to church. So we're going to do this song for it in dedication to him. Help me. We call on you. 
What happened, Johnny?
Come on, man. Right in, 
Give God some praise in this place. When you need it the most, that's when he stepped right in. Come on, I know somebody. I know somebody have experienced when Jesus stepped in when you need it the most. Somebody was about to give up, Craig. About to throw in the towel. And when we need it most, Jesus will step right in. Right in, right in. Y'all got a heart in here. Y'all got a heart in here. Hallelujah. It's hot. It's hot because spiritually we are in a season. We are in a season of uncertainty. But God gave us a word this morning. He did that. It's a very familiar word. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for stepping in right on time. When we needed you the most, you stepped in, Father, and you took away our pain, our sorrows, our doubts our insecurities, you took away those things that hinders us from serving you. And Father, we want to say thank you. Father, we thank you this for another day that you have given us. One that we did not deserve, but because of your unmerited favor, you saw fit for us to gather in this Bethel spot today. Come in, my Father, at this hour in the day to pay homage to your name because you are worthy to be praised. And so, Father, we thank you. And we ask now, Father, that you allow your word not to fall on deaf ears, but let it fall on the tablets of their hearts so that they will run with it. And let this word encourage us to keep on on this journey. We give you glory now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm happy to be in the house just one more time. I know the devil had a desire to sift us like wheat this week. But Claudia, we made it to the house one more time. And and you bought your daughter. You bought my lawyer. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so good to hear today. Y'all know I'm excited to see y'all. Amen. There's a word that comes from the Lord, and it's found over in the book of Galatians. Galatians, the ninth chapter, the sixth chapter, verse nine. Will you please stand for the reading of God's word? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Galatians 6, 9. And it reads, and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Some, some, some scripture says if we do not give up. But my Bible reads, if we do not lose heart, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And you know, just for a minute, Travion, I want to talk from my thoughts. No matter what, no matter what, our season is here. See, don't nobody get excited but me. I was excited all by myself. Out on that porch with mosquitoes biting me up. And, and I came up with a subject, Janine, and said, no matter what, no matter what. our season is here. Right. Amen, amen. Our season is here. And I want you to, I want you to gravitate to that, that word, our season. Somebody say, our season, our season. is here. Can, can you feel that in your spirit? Our season is here. Amen. I'm um, biblically knows it for those of you who don't know. So the book of Galatians falls from the inspired pen of, of Paul. And it is in the character of this Christian, Christian freedom. It is inspired pen of Paul and it is the character of Christian freedom. Now in this profound letter, Paul proclaims the reality of our liberty in Christ 
freedom from the law and the power of sin and freedom to serve our living God. Somebody say amen. 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 Now the purpose, my brothers and sisters, of this message is to encourage us to hold on to the promise until God gives benediction. In other words, it's not over until God says it's over. We're in a season, church, and our season is here. Brothers and sisters, the whole notion of being a servant of God will rest on the shoulders of our attitude. I got two amens. I say our... Being a servant will rest on the shoulders of our attitude. See, in order for us to be fruit-producing servants, we must develop this attitude that says our season is here. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yeah. See, it is often said uh, for every level there is a new devil. Yeah. In other words, when we make up our minds to serve the Lord, we become targets for the devil to deceive. Now, Paul gives us warning in this message in verse 7, Deacon Styles, when he said, God cannot be mocked. In other words, don't be fooled by others who are non-productive in their walk with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Don't let them tell you any and every old thing. See, see, there are some folk that look productive from observation. But, but come here, Reverend Andrew. But when you come closer to inspect the tree that they represent, yeah, yeah, yeah. you will discover that there is no fruit. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. They, they, they say anything. Yeah. They do anything. Yeah. They, they look good on Sunday. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they dress up the outside, yeah, yeah. but the inside is a marvelous mess. Yeah. In other words, you got to stop faking it yeah. until you make it. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Over in the book of Mark, the 11th chapter, Reverend Andrews, when, when Jesus was leaving Bethany, he, he was hungry, and from a distance, he saw a fig tree. He, he went to find out, was there any fruit on the tree? But when he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. Can I tell you why? He found nothing but leaves because it was not seasoned for figs. But I want to let you know that our season is here. Now, now Deacon Lowe, I want to suggest that, that we should not lose heart because others don't see the results of our labor. That's right. That's right. That there's some folk yeah. that won't see yeah, yeah. and give you respect for your labor. Yeah. There are some folk yeah. who, 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 will, who will jump on board with you once you announce what you going to do to serve God. And then you got another group that, that's going to wait and see what happens and then they'll get on board. And then you got a famous group, Vaughn, Deacon Vaughn, that, that, that going to sit back, complain about everything, and do nothing. Am I here yet? I, I'm talking about fruit producing servants. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't see, if others don't see your labor, uh -huh. you just keep doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. And in due season, you will reap your harvest. Yeah. See, sometimes it seems useless and worthless, yeah. but if you have the right motive, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Johnny, you need to give me some dinner. Don't? <laughs> if you have the right motive right. and keep the faith, you will hear God say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. God will tell you you've been faithful over a few things, Macedonia. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many. But we must have patience. There it is. There it is. We must remember that in God's time, every good seed that we sow, no matter what persecution we face, no matter what obstacles got in our way, no matter what stumbling blocks we come upon, we must hold on, hold on. because no matter, what, no matter what, our season is here. Yeah. 
Am I right about it? See, when it's your season to harvest, watch what God, God will give you your reward in proper time. When, that's when it's your season. You got to be, have been faithful over a few things. Master Donald, we've been faithful. And you need to tell yourself, our season is here. Man, well, in light of the fact, since I can't get nobody to talk to me and understand our season is here, um, I, I want to say that we all must encourage ourselves in love. Yeah, yeah. And when we get weary. Because in other words, we got to stay focused on pleasing God yeah. and not ourselves. Mm -hmm. right. Well, Keisha, I'm going to give you three things. I'm going to give you three things that I found in the text. The, the first thing is we must stay committed. You got to stay committed because our season is here. You, you must talk to me. Our season is here. Y'all got to repeat that. Our season is here. The second thing, the second thing is we must remain consistent. We must remain consistent. The third thing is we must stay faithful. Am I right about it? Bro bro brothers and sisters in Evangelist Burden, in order for us to be committed, we must first understand its definition. Yeah, yeah. A commitment mm -hmm. is a pledge or a promise. Yes, In this text, Paul speaks to us from his experience. Yeah, yeah. Pa Paul knew that we would face adversity when we vowed to be committed to the work of the ministry. Yeah. Am I right about it? See, Paul saw the potential of the people in Galatians. And he knew that they were going to revert back to their old ways, their old ways, if they lost focus of their purpose. Master, don't, let's not lose our focus. It's our season now. See, sometimes, sometimes we forget, Ashley, from whence we came. And Paul was telling them that, that no matter what, your season is here. He said that they should get, not get weary in well-doing. He said the problem that, that, that sometimes, sometimes some people have are, 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 are not, they're not willing to commit themselves and, and complain about what you don't do. Man, I'm trying to help somebody here. Deacon Williams, I know you got my back. And, and the reason they do that, come here, come here, somebody, is because of your committed lifestyle. It shows how little that they are doing. See, when we are committed, yeah. folk will sometimes hold a cloud of your past against you. Yeah. Who, who, who told him he was a preacher? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I don't know how they let him be a deacon. Yeah. What's she doing serving on the door? How's she over the youth? Yeah. They always try to hold a cloud of the oh. past yeah. over you. And sometimes, watch this now, don't y'all miss this. Come here, boom. Sometimes they feed others negative information about you that causes them to doubt your sincerity of the ministry. But no matter what the naysayers say, you just don't get weary in doing well because your season is here. See, Paul was challenged by many. But Paul stayed committed at any cost. C come here, somebody. Paul was thrown in jail. He was talked about. Yes, he was. Now, y'all act like y'all ain't never been talked about. Yeah, y'all was talked about, yeah. doubted. Yeah. But, but he didn't let what others think about him yeah. erase what God had brought him to. Yeah. For the Bible tells us in Psalms, 37, 5, and 6, Reverend Andrew, he said, commit your ways to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. He said, trust in him, trust him, and he will do this. Yeah. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn. Yeah. In other words, keep your hands yeah. on the gospel fly, yeah. which is the word of God. Because if we stay committed, yeah. the fruits of our labor won't be done in vain. Yeah. Now let us consider the second thing that I found in the text. Randy, you rolling with me now. Come on now. Brothers and sisters, staying consistent. Come in now, don't y'all miss this. We'll take discipline. <laughs> Renee, what, Renee, you here? <clears throat> staying consistent, we'll take discipline. Yes, sir. Now, now, Sonia, 
when we consistently do things over and over, it becomes a habit. And we sometimes get weary and tired of doing the same thing and don't see results. And Paul tells us in this text, he said, no matter what we can't see yet, your season is here. You must be consistent at doing the right thing. Paul demonstrates what it means to be consistent. Even when we can't see immediate change, I say, even when we can't, who y'all ain't going to talk to me today? I say, even when we can't see immediate change, immediate change, Paul stayed consistent. Even when they didn't want to hear what Paul had to say, Paul's consistent behavior made some folk mad. It made some folk mad, uh, uh, Deacon Style, because they want to be in control of their own life. See, when we see others going down the wrong path in life, no matter what they say or think, we are obligated as Christians to tell them that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Reverend teacher, that is a fine line between consistent and pushy. Paul was consistent, but he wasn't pushy. See, Paul had facts and evidence, and the fact that Paul had a Damascus Road experience was a reason that, that he consistently shared the good news of Jesus Christ. Can some of you share the good news of Jesus Christ? Based on your past experience, yes, yes, yes. can I get somebody to say yes, sir? Yes, sir. Paul knew that the Galatians would lose hope yes. if they faced too much opposition. Yes. Master, we're going to face some opposition yes, because our season is here. Yes. And there are some folk mad at you right now yes. because your season is here. Yes. Am I right about it? But we can't lose hope. We can't lose hope yes. at what God has put in our lives. And sometime in life, we go through so much and we call it quits before our due season comes. Paul didn't want the Galatians to quit before their season came. And, and that was the reason for his consistency. Brothers and sisters, no matter what they say, our season is here. We must never miss the opportunity to serve God because through all we endure, it's just a preparation season for a harvest. Somebody say harvest time is here. Harvest time. Can you sing that song for me? It's harvest time. Hebrews 11 and 1. You got to keep the faith because it's harvest time. Our third thing and found thing, Miss Ma, that are found in the text. I'm going home now. The Bible tells us that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. In other words, no matter what the situation may be, we must stay faithful because at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. We must understand that our, our due season, it is on schedule and we can't reap until it's time to reap. But in the meantime, come here, come here, Cynthia Kyla. In the meantime, don't get weary. Just keep the faith. Because when you stay faithful, you will understand that your due season is a divine moment. It's a divine moment when God release that what you have believed him for. Don't get weary. Because anything God places in your hand, it is a seed. In other words, we must stay faithful and take care of what God has blessed us with. It may not be what you like for it to be right now, but in due season, if you stay faithful, it will materialize in God's time. Paul stayed faithful no matter what he was faced with because Paul knew that it was, and it was his due season because Paul 
He did not lack devotion with his God. So brothers and sisters, prayer will take us through, but staying faithful will keep us as we go through. So I stopped by just for a minute. Come here, Janine. I got to go home now. Someone know that the work that you have done, it will speak for itself. I don't care what the naysayers say, but the work that you do will speak for itself. No matter what it look like now, our due season is now. No matter what they say, your quality of life will change, but you must stay committed, be consistent, and remain faithful because the text says, the text says, because God right, he said the proper time, you will reap your harvest if you don't give up. No matter what it look like now, our season, it is here. Reverend teacher, as I try to get out of here, allow me to tell you what my friend Job said. Job said, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. You will be slayed in this season because you done made the devil mad. Am I right about it? Job told me to tell you, Miss Margaret Terry, he said, no matter what trials I must encounter, no matter what difficulties I must suffer, no matter what afflictions I must endure, burdens I must bear, frustrations I must face, battles I must fight, and regardless of the opposition that I must contend with, I'm still, somebody say I'm still going to trust God because my season, it is here. I'm going to trust God, Deacon Williams, because he's been faithful to me and I must be faithful to him no matter what. My season is here. My season is here no matter what. Sometimes up. And sometime down, but no matter what I go through in this season, there's nothing that could separate me from the love of God. I want to tell you, Louise Singleton, that the key to success in getting through any season in your life is that you must first recognize where you are and whose you are. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and the first verse, he said, but there's a season for everything. And I want somebody to shout with me today because I'm living my best life because my season, my season is here. So I would like to submit to you today that we need to give God glory because we have overcome many obstacles on this journey and we must recognize we must recognize that our season is here don't get weary in doing well because the proper time the proper time is right now somebody need to tell him thank you somebody need to tell him thank you tell him thank you Tell him, thank you, if you don't mind. Let's go up to Calvary's cross and just remember what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. He hung, bled, and died so that you and I could have the right to the tree of life. And if you keep on, if you keep on reading, he'll tell you that you can have the abundant life. But I want you to remember that your season is here. Bro, Will, your season, your season is here. You need to tell yourself that your season is here. Sean, your season is here. Lily, your season 
Miss Loretta, your season is here. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Miss Louvenia, you know your season here, don't you? You know, Johnny, if I could sing, it's harvest time. If I could sing, but I can't. Hallelujah. If you don't do me, give me one verse. It's harvest time. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord I come. It's harvest time, boy. Sing it, son. Y'all don't make me wait on it now. It's hot. It's harvest time. Why the doors of the church open? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I come. To receive my blessing. Did you come to get your blessing? Faithfully waiting for the harvest. For the harvest is now. Well, I got the Hebrew 11 and 1. Faith to know my blessing has come. It's mine. It's mine. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Is harvest oh, time. Oh, oh, oh Lord, I come, I come to, receive to receive my blessing. blessing. Know my blessing has come. It is mine. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, Lord. It is harvest time. My blessing. My blessing. My blessing. Come on, the way. You got to believe that. My blessing. Yeah. My blessing on the way. My blessing on the way. My blessing. My blessing on the way. My blessing, my blessing on the way. It's on the way. My blessing, my blessing 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 on the way. My blessing, my blessing. Is mine. Oh, my Lord. Is harvest time. Oh, hallelujah. It's hard. Y'all believe that? Do y'all believe that? It's harvest time. It is harvest time. The Lord says, Now is the time for him to reap. Now, if you have not chosen, to become one of his own. If you have not chosen Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, this is your time. Today is your day. This is your hour. God says, none come to the Father except by the Son. So today we want you and we offer to you this free gift of salvation. If you have not already accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, we invite you to come right now. We invite you to come also to be a part of this church. You can come by letter, by water baptism, by Christian experience, or under watch care. But if none of those suit you, we just want you to come and meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Will there be one? Is there one that needs him today? Just one. Is there one? We offer Christ to you. Free. Come without hesitation. Come on. Don't take us. 
this time we ask that you cast your cares upon the altar. God cares for you. And as we ask Deacon Williams to come around and lead us in altar call prayer, we ask you to cast your cares upon this altar. Cast your cares upon this altar. Prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. your cares upon the altar. Yeah. We all stand in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. We all stand in the need of prayer. Stand where you are. Yes. Father God, I come at this hour, Father, Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity, O oh Lord. And for those that are gathered here this, at this moment around this circle, and those that are standing in the, in the pews, whatever is on their hearts and minds at this time, O oh Lord, we already know that you already know all about it. Yes. You know about each and every one that is here this morning. He knows our concern yes. and the issues that we'll face at this hour. Yes. Oh, Father, I ask that you go into the hospitals and nursing homes of those that are not here present at this hour, oh Lord. Bless our sick and shut in this morning also, Lord. And oh, Father, as we sit here this morning and listen to the words that, have, that the pastor have brought before us this morning, oh Lord. We were at this hour, we want to thank you for those words that you gave him to give to us at this hour, oh Lord. They all are needed words that we need to hear at time. Oh, Father, bless this entire congregation, this oh Lord. Bless the leaders of this country at this hour, oh Lord. Be with them and be with the leaders here in our communities, oh Lord. And oh, Father, don't forget those that cannot speak for themselves at this hour, O oh Lord. Be with them, O oh Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus, I ask these words. In Jesus' name, I pray at this hour. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's time for us to leave now. We've been here a minute. I enjoy every, every minute of it. The singing, the prayers, the devotion was heartfelt. And we thank you. Hallelujah. All right. We got a place we can go? church say amen let the church say amen God has spoken let the church say amen let the church say amen let the church say God has spoken, let the church sing. Father God, we truly thank you for this beautiful day that you have blessed us with, Father God.
and all the, all the many blessings already today, Father God. We thank you for blessing us with that word today, Father God. We pray that everyone receives something, Father God, that they may be able to carry, carry it back home, carry it out into the out into the highways and byways, as we Christians are supposed to do, carry your word to everyone that we think in need, that is in need of it, Father God. And Father God, bless you bless this week for them, Father God. May your grace and mercy, Father, dwell upon them, Father, throughout the week, Father God. And may you, may you always, always, Father God, be a blessing to them and be a blessing to someone else as they travel the highways and byways, Father God. Keep them safe and sound, Father God. We pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. And... Let the church Let the church say amen Let the church say amen All that's spoken Let the church say amen A happy day to a happy day to all and all